Alléluia, God bless you all in the name of Jesus. God bless you for another day. Let us pray together. Let's say, Father, we thank you, King of Glory. Father, we thank you for this wonderful moment in your presence, Lord. Father, we thank you for another day that you have given to us, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord, Father, for your divine protection, Lord. Father, for, thank you for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, Father, for all the unseen battles that you fight for us, Lord. Father, for our family. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, Father, for your love upon our life. We give you the glory. We give you for all that all, all the adoration. Father, we commit this wonderful moment, Lord, Father, into your hand as you are going to hear your word, O Lord, Father, to meditate it alone. Father, give us the wisdom to understand it, O Lord Jesus, Father. Give us, O Lord, Father, the, the, make us, O Lord, Father, understand the way you want us to understand and the message that you have for us, O Lord, Father, through this scripture in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord, Father, cover the word of God with the blood of Jesus. I come against the spirit of destruction in the mighty name of Jesus. I cover myself the blood of Jesus, the hearers the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we stand upon the word of God. The word of God is power. We stand upon the word of God. The word of God is power. We stand upon the word of God. The word of God is power. We stand upon the word of God. The word of God is power. We stand upon the word of God. The word of God is power. The word of God never get old. The word of God is always new. Is new every day. Is there to correct us? Is there to to cleanse us? Is there to prepare us? Hallelujah! Is there to instruct us? To give us instruction that we need as we run this heavenly race? Hallelujah! So the message of today. We still have to talk about repentance. There is no way we can talk any with for any other message except repentance because repentance is the key. Repentance is the key of uh, to our salvation. You cannot be saved without repenting. And for you to repent, you must know what you are repenting for. And for you to repent, uh, for you to repent, you need to be convinced. And the only thing that can convince us to be to lead us into repentance. Conviction will lead you into repentance. As for you to be convicted, you need to be convicted through the word of God. The word of God will tell you whatever you are doing, whether you need, whether you have to repent of it or not. Because if you don't have the knowledge of what you are doing, it is wrong. If the word of God doesn't correct you that you say that this is wrong, it is difficult for you to repent of something that you don't believe, of something that you don't believe that is wrong. Hallelujah. So that's the reason why we need to meditate the word of God. The Bible is telling us as we meditate it, we should observe it. To observe it and to do exactly according to all that is written there. We are talking about repentance. Like I said, repentance is the, the key to our salvation. John the, John the Baptist, John, Bat, um, John the Baptist, he came... He started his ministry. His ministry is was was all about repentance. He was just talking about repentance until he left. He was just talking about repentance, and he said in his ministry he was to come and prepare the way, to prepare the way for our Lord Jesus. That means you have to repent first, and repentance it will make you to now to obtain salvation, and salvation come through our Lord Jesus. So he came. He opened the door by inviting people to come and repent. And through repentance, you make you now to accept the salvation. Like I said, repentance is the key to our salvation. Hallelujah. So, the Bible says in um, Matthew chapter 3, verse 1, verse 1 and verse 2, uh, verse 1 and 2. It says, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He came through repentance to teach us to teach us um, how to repent. Even our Lord Jesus also started with the same thing. Our Lord Jesus started with repentance also. Our Lord Jesus also started on repentance. The Bible says in chapter 4, Matthew the book of Matthew chapter 4, 
verse 17. He said, for that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The same way we are saying every day that the main focus of a believer is repentance. You, without repentance, you cannot say that you are saved. You cannot say that you are saved. There is a thing that is not pleasing God in your life that you need to repent for. And that repentance is the one that will bring salvation into your life. And that repentance is the one that will bring salvation into your life. Because repentance will make you to bitterly regret of your attitude, your action. You see that, no, 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 no. How can I do that? I was so blind. Because the things that you used to do before you come to the knowledge of truth, if you have to do them today, you'll be ashamed of it. You, you even regret of doing it in the first place. That is sincere repentance. That means you have moved on for something that it was so disgusting, and then you repent of it. You don't go back to it. That is the true repentance, the genuine repentance. There is repentance and there is a genuine repentance. There is four steps of repentance. The first one is to take responsibility of your action, to accept that you are a sinner, to accept that you are wrong. That is the first step, you know. We must recognize that we have done wrong. We have done wrong, and because we recognize that you have done wrong, that wrong now, it will make you now, to, 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 it will lead you to another step. When you know that you have done wrong, the second step of re genuine repentance is regret. When you notice that you have done wrong, it will make you to regret. You regret bitterly. Why did I do this? You feel it in your heart that, ah, if I knew, I would not do that. If I knew, I would not say that. If I knew, I would not go to that place. You start regretting. You start feeling the pain of that, that sin, the pain of that action, the pain of that thing. When you start regretting, then the third step now is for you now to take decision. The third step will lead you now to take decision. You take decision that I will never do that again. I will never do that again. Ah, I regret of doing it in the first place. I know now I have the knowledge of it. I will not do that again. You start now taking decision. The place that I used to do, to go, I don't go there anymore. The things that I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The way I used to talk, I don't talk that way anymore. Because you now take the decision. You now, you're conscious of your action. You, act, you, you recognize it. You regret of it. Now you are taking decision. And that decision, and that decision of, uh, 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 th that you are taking, it will now lead you now to do what? You will take the decision that I will never to, to do the very action again. Re you regret of doing it. Now you cannot do it again. Now, the last one, which is key, is now confession and restitution. That's why the Bible is telling us in the first John, first John, the book of first John, the, the book of first John chapter one, verse nine, you know, verse nine. If you go to, if you have to, to start from verse eight, verse eight say, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. The one that doesn't confess his sin, believing that he's not, he has no sin, is the one that I said he has not yet faced the first step of repentance. That means he has not yet have the responsibility to accept that he's a sinner. Secondly, he has not yet regret on his action. Somebody that will repent without having the knowledge of that sin, you will go back to it. Why? Because he has not yet regret of doing it. Let's, for example, say that somebody that did abortion, you take the response, you know, you recognize that, you know that, ah, this one is a sin. You start regretting all the abortion that you have done. Then you take the decision of not going there again. But somebody that have not yet regret of the action of a sin, he will go back. 
he will go back to that same. That's why he say in verse eight, if he is say, if he, if we say that we have not sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us because we were born in iniquity. We live in a sinful world. So it's, it's easy for you to spot yourself. But in verse 9, that's why he said, when you take the first responsibility of accepting your sin, second, you, you regret of it. Thirdly, you now take the decision of not doing it again. Then you now go to verse 1. A verse 4 that says, if we confess, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our our sin and to cleanse us from all our righteousness because you have accepted, you have taken the decision of not going back to, to those actions. Then you confess your sin. When you confess your sin, you now get to the stage of doing your restitution. Because when you confess, the Holy Spirit now will come with the assignment to be revealing to you. Remember the so so so. You borrow something, you never pay. Remember so so so. It's not yours. You steal it. You need to go and return it. You start now confessing. You can even call people to say that no. Remember that thing that was missing in your house. You asked me. I I never say. I I never accepted. I was the one who took it. I was the one who did it. You understand? You start now confessing because when you did it, you was deeply in darkness. Now you have. God, you have come to the knowledge of truth. You have seen light. You have to confess. When you confess, now the Holy Spirit will come and do His work in your life. Let us quickly read Acts. The book of Acts. Quickly, the book of Acts. It's good to, to read the Word of God, to correct ourselves, especially in this time that we are living, my brother, my sister. Don't be too confident that you are right with God because you don't know. Maybe you have one spot. You know the Bible says only one is enough to disqualify somebody. Then in Act, let's see the Act, the book of Act, Act chapter 3, verse 19. It says, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sin may be brought out when the time of refreshing shall come on, shall come from the presence of the Lord. Do you understand? He said, after you repent and be converted. This is the after facing the all four step of repentance. You don't go back there because you already took the decision. Remember, I say you already regret of doing it, and you take the decision to change by confessing your sin and doing your restitution. Then you have to maintain it. That is the part that the Bible is telling us to work out our salvation. Then you start now working your salvation gradually to perfection. You understand? Because the Bible is calling us to be perfect. Even when people say, there's nobody is perfect. Yet yeah, nobody is perfect yet. That's why the word of God is coming to correct us so that we can walk towards perfection. To walk to be perfect. Because it's a commandment God gave us. In Matthew, 4, 4, in Matthew 5, 48, he said, be ye therefore perfect. Why? Because our heavenly father is perfect. For you to go to heaven, you must be perfect. If you die walking towards perfection, you make it to heaven because you are respecting the first step, confessing your sin, regretting, take responsibility, regret of doing it, and take the decision to change. And after changing, the Bible did, said, after repenting, you have to be converted. You have to be converted. I'm not talking about the conversion of snake. Snake never be converted. Snake never change. When the Bible says convert, we are talking about changing from one thing to another. You understand? Changing to one th from one thing to another. When the Bible says Jesus converted water to wine, he remained wine until all of them finished drinking it. He did not go back to water. It was water before and then become wine. That word converted. We are talking about converting, changing from one thing to another. That means you change from a sinful person to a faithful person. Somebody that obey the word of God, do the word of God. That's exactly what the Bible says, be, be converted. He said, I'm reading Acts 3 verse 19. He said, repent ye therefore, and repent ye therefore. He did not end there, and say, and as a condition. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. That your sin may be blown out. Because when you be converted for another person, 
Even when Satan is coming to accuse you before the Lord, I say, I came to accuse so, so, so. He said, that so, so, so is not the one that is standing before me. The one that is standing before me is already covered with the blood of Jesus. He's no longer the same person because he has repented. He changed his identity from a sinful person to a righteous person. You understand? There's no more. That's what the Bible said. There is therefore no more condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Those that are in Christ, in Christ Jesus, who did what? Who walked not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Because when you be converted, you are converting from flesh to spirit. You are changing from flesh to spirit. You are no longer walking in the flesh, but you are walking in the spirit. That means anything to do with flesh is not part of you. It's not part of you. And the work of the flesh are what? The work of the flesh are what? That God doesn't want us to walk. Doesn't want us to. Uh, uh, um, I'm reading uh, Roman eight, the book of Roman eight. It says, "Therefore, there is therefore no, there is therefore now." You see, the Bible says, "There is therefore now, now that you have confessed, now that you have repented, now that you take decision, now that you have regretting, now that you confess, now that you do your restitution." Now that you take the decision to, to be converted, to repent and to be converted, therefore, there is no more condemnation because you are no longer walking in the flesh. Because you are in Christ Jesus now. Because you are in Christ Jesus, you no not walk after the flesh but the spirit. He said, therefore, now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. If you are still in Christ Jesus and you are still walking in the flesh, you are not yet safe. You are still condemned. You are still condemned. The word of God is still condemning you. The word of God is still condemning you because you are still full of flesh in you. Let's see what the Bible says in Galatians 5 verse 19. The, the work of the flesh that we, we should not have it within us as we are in Christ Jesus. The work of flesh that after repentance, this thing cannot be found on you. If you still have those things, then you are not yet safe and you are still condemned to the word of God. It says, now the work of the flesh are manifest, which are this, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, Variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seduction, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such as like of the which I tell you, you I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you have those things, there is no heaven. No matter how you think you are working your salvation, no matter how you think you repent, if you do your repentance and you have not faced these four steps, you have not taken the decision to be converted, then you have not repented, then your repentance will, is not genuine in the eyes of God. Repentance is to turn away from your evil ways, in the, in the evil way and the deeds that is not pleasing God. And take the decision. The true repentance will result in a, a change of action, a change of dressing, a change of attitude, a change of talking, a change of everything. You'll be converted from com one person to another completely different from the previous person. You cannot be saved without repenting. True repentance brings transformation. Nobody should lie to you. The true repentance will bring transformation. We will become a new person in the eyes of God. You become a new person in the eyes of God. You are no longer the same person. You become completely new, different from the previous person. Even the one that knew you, they will tell you that. They will tell you that this one. That's exactly what he said in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. He said, therefore... If any man be in Christ, he is a new creator. The old things has passed away. Behold, the new things become new. The new, the, 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 the old things become new. The old things become new in your life. 
the way of behaving, the way of dressing, the way people that knew you before they say, they'll be looking, they'll be wondering, oh, who is this? Ah, who is another person? You understand? That is the genuine repentance, the true repentance, a call to repentance. This is a call to repentance, my brother, my sister. A call to repentance in time like this is not the time to be in destruction. The time like this is the time to check the spot in your garment. I mean, spiritual garment, physical garment. You understand? Your attitude, things, are, people as around you, they are still doubting your salvation. Ah, then you have work to do. The Bible says we should work our salvation. Work out your salvation. You know when you have farm, you have to be working it out all the time. The people that are doing farming, they go there every day. Even if it's not the time of harvest, they will go there to clean the, the, the farm. And there's a time to clean, and there's a time to sow seed, and there's a time to be maintaining so that, you know, the, the other, the polluted one, will not grow together with the real ones, you know. The tears will not come out with the yeast. They will remove, they go to farm. They will not plant, they will not go and plant seed and then wait until six months time or three months time that the fruit will grow to go for the harvest. No, 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 no. They don't do that. They go there and check every day. If the fruit that they are, the, the seed that they sow is growing the way it's supposed to, maybe they need to maintain them, they need to do some things. People will farm, they go there every day to check. We have to be checking the farm of our heart. The fruit of spirit that we have sown, we are seeing, we are sowing in our heart. He have to be bringing fruit. You have to to make sure that he is there is a good condition that he can grow to manifest, so that when the time of harvest will come, your name will be written in the book of life. We'll be checking our heart, the things that we are there, the thing that you need to remove, the thing that you need to correct. You understand? Work out your salvation as the farm people do. Walk out as when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do, you know, maybe in not in the morning, maybe in the afternoon, maybe in the weekend. I mean, how often do you clean your house? When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do, you brush your teeth because why? You don't want your mouth to smell. You shower. You prepare yourself. If you can take care of your body, you can also take care of your soul. If you can take care of your your body you can also take care of your soul do you know that you have soul many people they don't know that they have soul they think they're alone no you are not alone you are three in one and that three in one they will pass through judgment according to the word of god that three in one it will be judged so the same way you take care of your, your body, you don't want your body to smell. You want, uh, when you are walking on the street, people are seeing you, you are clean, you are this. Your soul has to also be there because your soul is the one that you pay the price of all the things that you are doing in your body. It says here, if you don't know that you are three in one, start paying attention from now by reading the word of God. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, the book of 1 Thessalonians 5, Verse 23, he said, And the very God of peace sanctify you whole. And I pray God, your whole, what? Number one, spirit is inside you. He said, your whole spirit in you. And soul in you. And body to be what? To be preserved blameless into the coming of our Lord Jesus. We know our Lord Jesus is coming. Is your body blameless? Is your spirit blameless? Is your soul blameless? If your spirit is not blameless, my brother, my sister, ah, you know how your judgment will be. Because all of three of them, the Bible says in James 2.10, if you keep the whole law and yet you fail in one, you'll be guilty in all. You'll be guilty of all. You'll be guilty of all. Yes, you say that you, you, you are no... You are not, uh, you are, your body, uh, you don't dress ungodly, but your spirit is filthy with all this ungodly thinking, ungodly something. Listen what the Bible verse says. The Bible verse is telling us our spirit have to be blameless. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says our spirit 
our soul, eh, our body have to be blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus. And you are waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus. Are you blameless already? Is your spirit blameless? Is your body blameless? Huh? Is your spirit blameless? Is your body blameless? Is your soul blameless? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1, it says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, which promise this Bible verse is talking? The promise of the coming of our Lord Jesus. Because we all have promise because Jesus said that I will go and prepare the mansion. In my father's house, there is many mansion promise. He said, in my father's house, there is many mansion. As I'm going, I will come back to take you of myself. Hey, see the honor. Jesus did not, he did not say he will send the angels. He will come himself. He will come down for the second time to come and take you with him to present you the mansion himself. That means he is the one that is going to fulfill that promise that he promised you and I. Now, listen what the Bible says here. Having these prom promises, dear beloved, having therefore these promises, dear beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, which is your body, and the spirit, which is your soul and your spirit. And they did what? Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So, Having therefore this promise that Jesus said that he's come, he's going to prepare the place he's coming. If he come and meet you, you are unclean. If he come and meet you, you are filthy. Your spirit is filthy. Your body is filthy. Your soul is filthy. You are not going. You are not going with him. That is why we need a genuine repentance. Only a true repentance, a genuine repentance that will make us to, to deeply regret and come out of that mess that we put ourselves through the sinful life that we were living before. That's why the Bible says, don't think your sin is greater than any other sin that God cannot forgive. Because the word of God, God says he honor his word more than his name. You understand? So, whatever is the word of God say, if you follow the word of God and you believe in the word of God, it will be. The Bible says in Matthew 21, 22, he says, whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believe him, ye shall receive Hallelujah. It says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all our righteousness, including the righteousness of abortion, including the righteousness of fornication, including the righteousness of lying, including the righteousness of stealing, the righteousness of murder, every unrighteousness in your life is faithful to cleanse you from it. But only if you confess them. And the Bible says in, uh, in Act 3, verse 19, it says, as we repent, repent, and repent, therefore, and be converted. You cannot repent without changing. Because repentance brings transformation. Repentance brings change in your attitude. Change in your behavior. It says in Act 3 verse 19, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sin may be blown out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of our Lord. The presence of our Lord, what? Our Lord Jesus. When he comes. When he comes. Because he will surely come. He will not tarry. He will surely come. He will not tarry. Even if he tarry to come before you die, if you die before he comes, you still have to go and meet him. Even if he tarry before, before you die, if you die before our Lord Jesus come, eh, you still have to face him. Even if no come to you, you still have to face him in judgment. You still have to face him in judgment. So my brother and sister, why will we waste time? Why will we waste time? The time is now. The time of repentance is now. We have the grace. Grace appeared to you and I. To teach us how to deny all this ungodliness, all this uh, pollution, all those things that will not profit us anything to our salvation. You understand? The Bible says in the book of Titus, the book of Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 12, it says what? For the grace 
The grace of God, the grace of God is our Lord Jesus. Our Lord Jesus is the grace of God that appeared to us, appeared to you and I in that cross. The grace of God is the is the our Lord Jesus that appeared in that cross for you and I. He suffered for hours for you and I to repent, to confess our sin, and to obtain salvation. Listen what the word say, the word of God say. For the, gross, the, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. The grace of God is our Lord Jesus that brought salvation to you and I. It appeared to us to bring salvation. Listen to it. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Verse 12 is the key. Yeah, Jesus appeared to all of us. But it's not all of us that are going to be saved. Only those that you are allowed, verse 12, to walk on them. Hallelujah. Verse 12 say, teaching us that denying ungodliness, worldly lust, and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Why is the Bible say in this present world? The, the, the abomination that is happening in this present world. Ah, our, our forefather, they did not face it. Our grandmother, they did not face it. In fact, when my mother was growing, Growing up, it was not there were no mini skirt like today, they were not showing your body, there was no half nakedness, it was a shameful thing those days. But today, things that was abomination, it become allowed. Homosexual on those days, it was a shameful thing today, is allowed. It says it's not everybody that the grace appeared to that will be saved for. It's those that the verse 12 will work on them. The verse 12 say, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. When the Bible says soberly, the Bible is telling us to be sober in this present time, to be sober in this end time, to be watchful as you are watching. Be sober, be careful. That means be careful because. We are in the dangerous time. If we are in the dangerous time that deceiving spirit is there to deceive many. Only those that will be sober, like the wise virgin, they are the ones that will be saved. If you allow the grace of God to teach you how to deny all this ungodly thing, all the works of the flesh in your life, then to deny all the unrighteousness, then You'll be okay. He said to live soberly, to deny all this ungodliness and worldly lust in this present world. Because in this present world, many abominations become allowed. When a, 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 a world that a daughter, a mother is allowed to marry her own daughter as lesbian. Yes, if you don't know, it is happening. The world that a mother is allowed to marry his own son that he gave birth to. If you don't know, it is happening. It's not because you are not seeing it that you think it's not happening. Jesus said in Matthew 24 that the abomination will increase. And the love, because the abomination will increase, the love of many, it works cold. But those that will endure to the end, my brother, my sister, be the one that will endure to the end because you don't want to face another face of God. <laughs> Let us always have that image that is a merciful God because if you have to face the consuming fire, hey, Satan is going to face it in that lake. The lake of fire that is going to consume Satan himself, the hell himself, dead himself. Jay, you don't want to be there. So this is the time to live soberly. To teach ourselves, to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us the things that we need to deny. The things that you can easily remove our name in the book of life. Those are the things that we need to, de to deny. This is the time, my sister, the abomination is already increasing. Some restaurant, they're already selling a, 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 a human being flesh. They're selling it. You don't know. Yes, they're selling it and it's allowed. When they ask them in an interview, you know what they say? They say they ask the parents, they ask the family to sell their family member's body when they die. And that's how they are, they are using. They are not killing any human being. They are, they are buying the dead body to do, to use it as a meat to other people. And people are entering that restaurant knowing that they are going to eat a human being flesh. Did you see the abomination Jesus is talking about in Matthew 24? 
Did you see the abomination Jesus is talking about? My brother, my sister, when you are praying, when you are going to the shop, before you leave your house, pray. Pray so that you know by the different thing. Pray the Holy Spirit to lead you to the right one. Pray the Holy Spirit to lead you to, to, lead you to the right food that is sanctified. Sanctify it to the blood of Jesus. You know, when I buy food or when I want to eat my own food that I cook, you know what I pray? I say, Father, as I was in the shop, as I'm leaving my house, I'm going to buy fish. Let it be the fish that you have created in the sea. Let it not be the fish that was transformed to another thing. As I'm going to buy meat, Father, as I'm going to remove this my money, I'm buying the meat that you have created from the beginning. If it's goat, I'm going to buy goat. If it's cow, anything that is not cow is not my portion. Before I eat, I say, Father, sanctify this food and turn it in the way that you have created it. If it's vegetable, I'm eating in the name of Jesus. Anything that the enemy has turned into another thing is not my portion. And I sanctify it to the blood of Jesus. That's how I pray. Because this world, eh? Ha! <laughs> Even the water that we drink, you cannot trust it. Because the person that is drinking that water, he did incantation for his, to promote his business. He did the juju to promote his business. He killed, he shared human, he did sacrifice to promote his business because... Then the kind of challenge all those trader people having, eh? This one in one street they have five shop, and this shop want to have more customers, and this one want more. Uh, what do you think they are doing for them to to be selling, for them to 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 maintain their business, for them not to not to fall in their business? What do you think they are doing? Somebody that doesn't have Jesus, what do you think is is promoting his business? If the business is not promoted by God, it's promoted by, by who? Remember, this world is controlled by two rulers. This world is controlled by two rulers. You have to choose which ruler you want to be ruling over you. The Bible is telling us you cannot serve two masters at the same time because there's two masters. We have God and you have Satan. And be in God's sight, he will protect you from the, the manipulation and pollution of Satan. Because if you are not from God's side, whose side are you? Because you cannot be without sight. You have sight. If you cannot serve God, you are serving Satan. Whether you like it or not, you might not know, but yes, you are under manipulation, manipulation of Satan. Because Satan will not allow you to be free. His assignment is to destroy you. How can he allow you without polluting you when you don't have protection? This is the time. This is the time. Let us prepare ourselves. Jesus is coming. And it might be any moment. It might be any time. How he finds you. You know the end of the whole thing is better than the beginning. The whole, the end of all things is better than the beginning. No, Apostle Paul started as a sinner. He ended up as a righteous man. Judah that he started as a righteous man, he ended up as a sinner. My brother, my sister, we should not glory yet until you hear that word, faithful servant. Until you hear that word, faithful servant, do not glory yet. The Bible is warning us, you that you are so confident about your salvation, you think you are right with God. The Bible says, take heed unless you fall. Many people, they are already in floor. They are creeping. They believe in that they are walking. They are creeping, they are, they are walking with their belly like a snake. They think they are running. A belly red, you know, get tired, you should not get tired of running. Run with the word of God. Run with the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Always cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. I love you all. Shalom. <laughs>